In the last video, we considered enamine formation from the perspective of drawing mechanisms, thinking about step by step how opposite charges attracting cause that transformation. In this video, I want to still think about that same reaction, but in a different context, from the perspective of synthesis rather than from mechanisms. So we're going to build our way up to doing multi-step synthesis problems with aldehydes and ketones. What does enamine formation look like when you're doing a synthesis? That's what we're going to try to get to here. So in these reactions, you'd see a ketone. You'd say, all right, we're in the right chapter. And then you'd see this amine. Now, you know it's an amine because you have a nitrogen with single bonds around it. Now, this amine is bonded to, the nitrogen is bonded to two carbons. That means that it is a secondary amine. And that's how we know that we're going to form an enamine. Rather than an imine or shift base. So we're going to form an enamine here. Okay, how do you form an enamine? Well, redraw the ketone. So here, this cycloheptanone. But instead of the double bond to the oxygen, have a single bond to the nitrogen. Okay. Now, the rest of the nitrogen, the carbon chain on that nitrogen is still going to be there. So it has a five membered ring. Now, you just need to form a pi bond. And since the molecule is symmetrical, you could form it to either side. I'm going to form it to the left here. And there we have our enamine. That's the product that you would form if you did this reaction. And you'd also form water, which they're saying you remove here. You remove it to push the equilibrium forward to the right using Le Chatelier's principle. OK, let's try it again. In this one, we have a ketone. Ah, tricky, tricky. They're writing it above the arrow. Looks like a reagent. Uh, looks like, rather than, looks like a, yeah. And then we have a, a secondary amine. Now, you know this is a secondary amine because the nitrogen is bonded to one, two carbons. Because we have a secondary amine, we know we're going to form an enamine, not an imine. So we can draw the ketone, but instead of the double bond to the oxygen, we're going to draw a single bond to the nitrogen. The carbon chains on either side stay there, so these cyclohexyl groups stay. So that's the amine part. Now we just have to add the ene. Now the ene is on the part of the molecule that was um, that was in the ketone. And here that's symmetrical, so you can form that on either side. It would be symmetrical on any test I give. If it weren't symmetrical, you would want to form the double bond to the, to the more substituted position. That'll give you the more stable double bond. So the position that has the double bond with more carbons branching off of it. So you can see how if you're given an, a secondary amine and a ketone, you can draw the enamine. All right, here's another one, same idea, but this is going to be intramolecular. Biological molecules have these different functional groups on them all the time in different places. So for example, you could have a ketone in one place and a secondary amine in the other. And notice that this truly is a secondary amine. The nitrogen is bonded to two carbons. Now, because that nitrogen is secondary, we know that we're going to form an enamine. I mean, here, we're doing a video on enamine, so it's clear that we're going to form an enamine, but imagine it's mixed in with other problems on a test. We know it's an enamine because the nitrogen is secondary. It's bonded to two carbons. All right, well, in an enamine, you form, you still have, here, I'm going to draw this carbon over here. All right, so that's our carbon. Now, we're still going to have a bond to where the oxygen is, but it'll be to the nitrogen. On one side, that nitrogen will be just be bonded to a methyl group. But on the other side, it's going to be bonded to in a ring. One, two, three, four. There will be four carbons, including the one that is the carbonyl. So one, two, three, four. 
So one, two, three, four, plus the nitrogen will be in the ring. That will be a five-membered ring. Now we already have two of the five atoms, so we just have to add three more, and there's our five-membered ring. So you could see that just like here, we're counting and the nitrogen is five. So likewise over here, two, three, four, five. So we form that ring. Now that's everything to the right of the ketone. We also have this sort of tert-butyl group to the left. So coming off of here, we should have that sort of tert-butyl group. Okay, well, in this case, we formed an amine, but we still have to do the ene part. We still have to put the double bond in. And the double bond is gonna go to one of the sides of, the, of where the nitrogen attached. Notice that it cannot go to the left. That would give this carbon five bonds, 10 electrons around it, which is not possible. So the enamine has to go to the right. And so if you leave this molecule alone with itself, it will turn in to that. It'll exist like in equilibrium. Those two forms of that molecule will exist in equilibrium. And if you want this weird ring, more of that, then all you have to do is remove more water. And Le Chatelier's principle will push the reaction to the right as we discussed in previous videos. All right, let's try to do a similar thing with B. So it's B, a weird looking molecule, but we have a ketone, so we know we're in the right spot. And then when you look at the nitrogen, we think, okay, amine, what type of amine? The nitrogen is bonded to two carbons, so this is a secondary amine. So we know we're gonna be making an enamine, not an imine. Okay, well, let's zoom in on this carbon here. We'll draw that carbon. And because this nitrogen is on the same molecule as the ketone, it's gonna end up forming a ring. Now, instead of where the double bond to the oxygen is, I'm gonna put that nitrogen. How many carbons should there be in that ring? Well, including the ketone, or how many atoms in the ring? Including the carbonyl carbon, we have one, two, three, four, five. We already have two atoms drawn. So we just need to add three, so one, two, three, and there's our ring. Now I'm gonna number this in the same way that I numbered the other one, starting at the, what was the carbonyl carbon and going toward the nitrogen. So we have five there, right? Notice, nitrogen's on five, nitrogen's on five. So we added the right number of carbons. That's how you can check. Okay, well, in this molecule, we have two methyl groups coming off of carbon three. So I'll move that three we have two methyl groups there. Okay, next. Next, we have a phenyl group, right? That's what benzene is called when it's a branch, a phenyl branch coming off of carbon number one. So benzene, our good old friend, never deserts us. <laughs> so, um, so that is our molecule there. Now, the nitrogen, so far we've taken account of that. Notice this nitrogen also has an ethyl group coming off of it. And so that is our full enamine, complete enamine. Oh, except that we haven't drawn the ene, right? We have the amine there, we just have to draw the ene. Now, we can't form the double bond toward the, we can't form the double bond toward the, the uh, benzene ring because that carbon then would have 10 electrons around it and five bonds. So it has to go in the other direction. And so that is our complete enamine. So that's sort of trying to get you to visualize how enamine f can, enamines can be formed um, if you have a secondary amine and a ketone in the same molecule. And that happens very frequently in biological molecules. Okay, let's approach this synthesis of enamines from one last direction. What if instead of being given the reagents and asking what will the enamine look like, what if we say, well, we wanna form this enamine, what do I need to make it? So all you have to do for this is draw a line in between the nitrogen and the carbon with a double bond. Everything to the right of that line you're gonna redraw. But instead of a bond to the, another ring, you'll have a bond to a hydrogen everything to the left of that line you're gonna draw. 
but you won't draw the double bond. And where the nitrogen was attached, you'll have the ketone. And those are the two reagents you need to form this enamine, a ketone and a secondary amine. Okay, let's try the same thing again. How would we form this amine, B? Draw a line between the nitrogen and the carbon with a double bond. Draw everything to the left. The nitrogen, instead of bonding to the other ring, will be bonded to a hydrogen. There's our secondary amine. Then draw everything to the right. Oops. Don't draw the double bond. And where the bond to the nitrogen was, draw a ketone. So we have our secondary amine and our ketone. Those will give us this enamine. All right, let's try it with C. Last one. Now this one's a little trickier looking because we formed a ring, so that means this must have been an intramolecular enamine formation. Same process, though. Draw a line between the nitrogen and the carbon with a double bond. Redraw the, the left side, but don't include the double bond. We'll have a methyl group here. That's this methyl group. And then we're going to draw a chain with one, two, three carbons. So one, two, three carbons. And off of the third carbon, we have the nitrogen. The nitrogen is also bonded to another methyl group. So you can see that it's secondary. Where it was bonded to the ring, we replaced that with a bond to a hydrogen. So there's our secondary amine. Now where the bond was to the nitrogen, that's where we put the ketone. And so this molecule by itself can do an intramolecular enamine formation to create this ring over here. And if you draw the mechanism, you would see that that's truly what you get. So these three exercises, are, or, or these few exercises, were meant to just explore the idea of enamines and forming enamines from different perspectives of synthesis. Because we're going to use this with other reactions in synthesis, and I wanted you guys to see what it would look like um, when you're thinking about the same reaction